What is a class? Class, of course, uh, you might be tempted to say is a, a bundle of mechanics that are related to each other. And sure, as a very broad definition, I think that works. Um, if you want to get more specific, there are other games that have things that are not classes, which kind of fulfill a similar, they, they have like a similar niche in those games' designs. Uh, Legend of the Five Rings, of course, has schools, which don't so much define what you can do as much as they define how, what sorts of abilities you should take if you want to accelerate the effect of your uh, your feature that you get at character creation. You know, uh, it's a, a rank that progresses at a certain speed if you take the kinds of things that that class cares about. Um, but it does not, well, I mean, it kind of does because it, it tells you which sorts of techniques you have access to. So to an extent, it will limit and, uh, and, and give you access to certain things. Um, so like it's, it's, it's definitely not a class, but it, it does share some similarities with classes. And of course, there are games that are completely classless. And there are games that have playbooks. Now, what's the difference between a playbook and a class? Uh, a class is specifically a mechanical uh it, it's it's uh uh it's features abilities and rules and mechanics that are tied together by a gameplay theme as opposed to a playbook which is tied together by a, a not even aesthetic theme but more like a narrative theme is that I'm not sure how it, I don't know that I have necessarily like a, a easy, pithy, quick, uh, uh, concise way to describe it. Um, let me give as an example, Blades in the Dark classically has playbooks rather than classes. And not only is there kind of free overlap between the, the different playbooks, you can take special abilities from any playbook. You actually aren't required to take any special abilities from your own playbook. So special abilities are not what defines the playbooks, though the special abilities are listed on specific playbooks due to their uh, uh, thematic matching to that playbook. Uh, the playbooks tell you what you get extra XP for, i.e. by doing the things that the playbook cares about, uh, stealth and evasion for the lurk, uh, violence and coercion for the, the cutter, arcane power for the, the whisper, um, those kinds of things. Uh, and it also tells you what gear you have. Now, I don't think that's a, a very significant part of what is a playbook. But I do think that the, the fact that you can take any abilities from any playbook really informs you on what it is the playbook cares about. The playbook is telling you what sorts of approaches your character should take. Because you're going to get more XP for doing the thing that the playbook cares about. Um, whereas a class tells you what sorts of things you can do, which is different. What sort of approach you should take versus what can you do? Um, the classes are much more prescriptive about the sorts of actions that you are able to take. And so the more a, a, uh, a class slash playbook or whatever it is that your particular game has, the more it leans towards defining what you can do, I'd say the more it leans towards being a class. Um, Classes are a useful way for RPGs. I, I don't want to talk too much about the, the difference between a class and a, a playbook. I just wanted to lay down the, the groundwork for what specifically am I talking about. I am talking about classes. This discussion does not cover playbooks or schools or any other sort of mechanical construct that might be similar to a class to fulfill that same niche, but it is not a class. So when I'm talking about classes... These are, this is, I mean, they, to, be, to be honest, they're arbitrary. They are arbitrary, which is not a bad thing necessarily. But they, they do define the play styles that are available in the game that these classes exist in. Uh, and it is, it, it is interesting to, to think about how, how much of a character's abilities and options come from either the base game itself, without regard to classes, versus from their class. Um, 
uh, fourth edition, right off the top of my head, has several options for combat for combat actions uh, that are available to everyone, regardless of your class. Um, but most of the time, you're probably going to be doing things that are related to your class because they tend to be cooler or stronger, etc. Um, but the the classes are able to fulfill or, or not fulfill they're they able, they're able to provide play styles that are not necessarily able to be supported through base gameplay rules what do i mean by that i mean if you want to have like the squishy artillery character whether that's an archer or a mage or whatever um you kind of have to do that through class mechanics you're not going to do that through playbooks. You're not going to do that through base rules, probably. I could see I could see someone trying. You're probably not going to going to do it that way. Um, you're going to do it through through class mechanics, um, because classes tend to define like health amounts and and what sorts of abilities you have. Um, you know, are you really artillery unless you have like an ability that increases your damage at range? You know, I think that's kind of required to call yourself artillery. At least as a character concept. If if all that makes you artillery is the fact you've picked up a range weapon and are using it, I think that is a very poorly supported character archetype. And it, it doesn't really feel special to me. And I would not describe the class as artillery. The character might be. Um, and so... Classes have to... Ha they, they, well, I guess they don't have to. We have seen from 5th edition, they don't have to have strongly defined identities, but they should. And here's what I mean by this. When I did my video on how I would redesign the Bard, I talked about really leaning into the musical aspect of the Bard and taking ideas from musical theory and musical composition and incorporating them into the class as features that are evocative of that idea. And I said, I think that the Bard should be a specifically musical class, and not just any performance, uh, but like specifically music, so that you can use these mechanics that are evocative of that idea. And I got a lot of feedback from people saying that the Bard shouldn't be purely music. It should, you know, that's that's too restricting. We don't want to restrict people into you know, doing the specific concept that you have, and like. Okay, but if you don't restrict players at all, then you don't really have a class idea, do you? There's no, there's not going to be unifying mechanics for complete freedom, right? There's, that's not a class. You can make a classless system where everyone has complete freedom, or you can have classes with defined identities. Trying to do both will accomplish neither. And as it happens, there is no ability to make a class that evokes the the kind of like music based magic without having it be restricted to that style of flavor or that 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 kind of flavor. <clears throat> I feel like I'm rambling a little bit here. I'm gonna try to get back on track. Hmm, <laughs> center. Uh. I, I was recently in a discussion with someone who uh, I'm actually not even sure if they watch this channel. Maybe they do. Let me know if you do. Um, who was they're trying to to write their own RPG, and they were sort of waffling between like, do I want a classless system where characters pick a uh, like a power source and your power source determines uh, what you are able to or, or how your your resources regenerate or how you use your resources. Um, but then like it's, it's classless. So you're, you're like, you know, buying mechanic or buying features with XP or whatever. I, I don't, I don't know that we haven't even got into like the idea of exactly how characters progress, but there was this, this idea that you would have access to spells, uh, or a list of abilities. I guess they're not always spells. Um, and then, uh, uh you pick them the same, like everyone picks the same lists of spells or abilities. Let's call them powers. Let's call them powers. Uh, everyone has access to the same list of powers, but they recover their like slots and their their, their resources differently depending on what uh, power source you have. And I pointed out that like this is go 
first off, this is going to make a lot of very samey feeling characters because everyone has access, access to the exact same stuff. Um, the whole point of classes is to increase the uniqueness of characters by separating mechanics from each other, saying this bundle of mechanics is good together. This bundle of mechanics is good together. But to cross through, like maybe there's a way to, to multi-class or cross-class or whatever your system has, but it's not going to be as convenient and ideally not quite as good as just sticking with your, your one concept. If multi-classing becomes better than single classing, I think you've done something wrong. Uh, unless you're in a game like uh, Fabula Ultima, where multi-classing is like practically mandatory. Uh, actually, it is mandatory. It's not, not practically mandatory. It's completely mandatory. You have to have more than one class uh, at character creation. It's not allowed. You are not allowed to not. Um, that's a, that's a whole different thing. But I mean, actually, so let's talk about that. Fabula Ultima has a, a wholly different approach to class structure than uh, D and D. Um, for them, like it's for, for one thing, it's not linear. You don't have to start at the beginning of the class and go to the end. Uh, you just sort of pick any ability off of the class that you're taking a level in. Um, that's I mean, it's still a class because every class in Fabula Ultima has mechanics that push you towards a particular play style. Uh, whether it's like taking damage to fuel up your abilities, casting spells to disable enemies, those kinds of things. They also have like narrative themes, typically, but those are pretty light. Um, I'm, I'm fully losing track of what my point is. I think, okay, so my original point is you kind of have to choose when you are designing a game. This is, this video is for game designers. I'm saying right at, right near the end. <laughs> this video is for game designers. Uh, when you are creating a game, you kind of have to decide if you want to have characters with a lot of freedom for how to build the characters, or if you want to have characters that have strongly defined identities. You can't have both. They are mutually exclusive ideas. But if you're going to go for classes, what you should do is have those classes have really strongly defined identities. It's kind of why I get annoyed when people say that, like, the fighter needs to be, like, equally good with all weapons. Like, don't make the fighter primarily melee. That's restricting people's concepts. And, like, as long as you have a ranged fighter-type character, why should the fighter have to be spread out amongst like lots of different like the idea of an archer and the idea of like you know a, a sword and board character versus the idea of like a great weapon fighter like these are all different concepts these are different archetypes like character archetypes that can exist in your head at once they are separate i think it's not unreasonable to expect them to be different classes in dnd they are of course the same class because of tradition uh i don't think that's necessarily healthy i don't think it's necessarily uh uh it's not evocative of any particular fantasy. Uh, and so it's frustrating to me when people try to design games and and they they want to they want to have classes for all the benefits of the class, which is you know your your bundle of identity, your your uh, your your collection of mechanics and play style. like a bit like classes should have a built-in play style. They want that, but then they also don't want to restrict it too much because that's telling someone how to play. So then they loosen it up. And now you have this sort of like loosey-goosey, poorly defined class that doesn't really push the player towards any particular play style. And then you're left with a mess. And you're left with the kind of thing that 5th edition does um, with regards to a lot of its classes, a lot of... A lot of 5th edition wants its cake and wants to also eat its cake. Um, and, that's, and that's what you end up with. Uh, I've gone on a bit long, as you can tell. Uh, so we're going to cut it off there. I, I, I don't know if I have more to say on this. There, there might be a part two to this. I don't know. We'll see.